Hey everyone, I'm Jen Thompson on behalf of Lighthouse for Life. I want to thank you for joining me today and also welcoming back one of our biggest friends from <laughs> across the country, Miss Kristen Jensen, author of Good Pictures, Bad Pictures and Good Pictures, Bad Pictures Junior. Thank you for joining us. Hey Jen, glad to be here with you. Yes, love talking to you, uh, bringing in your expert advice for this very important topic of porn proofing today's young kids. So we're asking uh, or putting forward a series of questions that we received as feedback from the first event we did with you guys. And so today's question, how do you have the conversation about pornography with your children without giving them too much information or taking away their innocence? That is a great question. And I think probably almost every parent thinks about that. We want to be able to keep our kids innocent, protect their childhoods and all of that. But the reality is they're growing up in a world where there is just so many sexual cues, hypersexualized cues coming in at them. And it makes them curious, you know, at an earlier age. So really when a child is protected and knows what to, you know, can recognize when they're seeing something harmful and they know exactly who to tell, and um, you know they have a plan in place, they can protect their own innocence. So I'll just tell you a story. Um, an 11 year old girl, her mother had read her good pictures, bad pictures, she knew about the can-do plan, so she was armed, and went to school, they went on a field trip with a, on a bus, and she was sitting next to her girlfriend, and uh, another member of the a uh, class came up and he said, hey, look at this. And he, you know, showed him the phone. And um, clearly it was pornography on the phone. And so this little girl that had been warned, she turned away and she said, I don't, I don't want to look at that. The other girl, though, what do you think she did? Curiosity probably drew her in. Yes, the curiosity drew her in. And um, she continued to look at the material. Obviously, no one had warned her. Mm -hmm. And so when this little girl got home, my friend's daughter, um, she basically told her mom what had happened. And this mom knew the mom of the other girl, so she called her up, basically. <laughs> this is what's happening. So it encouraged her to start those conversations. Um, so when a child is warned, they can protect their own innocence in so many ways. Um, now, you, you said, how do you have this conversation without giving them too much information? And I really struggled with that as I wrote Good Pictures, Bad Pictures. I wanted to be able to have parents be able to read the book without even, you know, even before they started conversations about sex and where babies come from. And I think we really achieve that. Um, so um, the definition that we have in Good Pictures, Bad Pictures of pornography is basically a definition of nudity that focuses on the private parts of the body, right? The, the parts that we cover with a swimsuit. And some people have said, well, nudity isn't pornography. And although nudity isn't pornography, how are you going to warn a five-year-old who may easily be um, exposed to pornography without telling them all about sex and all about sexual acts and different kinds of sex. I mean, you know, what they need is a very simple definition so that they can recognize it. Because let me tell you, Jen, if your kid is seeing nudity on the internet, they're probably not looking at the Sistine Chapel, right? Yes, that's exactly uh, right. Nobody ever got addicted to a museum. Yeah, you know what, Jen? I can't hear you very well. Uh oh. Can you hear me now? I can, but it's very, very light. Can you get a little closer to your? Uh... I hear you really well, thankfully. Okay. Well. Hmm. Okay. Well, we'll just go on. So I don't know, I'll, I'll, I'll repeat some of that and then you may have to edit it. Christine Chapel's part. Yeah, 
So if your child is seeing nudity on the internet or on an app or on a YouTube video, they're probably not seeing a picture or a video of the Sistine Chapel, right? So it's so important that they just have enough information that they know that they can, and, and then they know what to do when they see it. And then they can protect themselves. Then they can protect their own innocence. The kids that don't have a clue that are caught off guard, they're the ones that have their innocence stolen from them by the porn industry. So. I love the idea of equipping and empowering them. I love that. That's yeah. Really powerful. That, because we can't shelter them forever, so we need to teach them. That's really yep. cool. Thank you. All right. Well, thanks for being with us. Thanks for helping us help parents educate their kids to protect themselves.